tells uh, Vasata, a PR practitioner, a veteran of uh, great experience. Uh, he's currently the PRO, Association of the National Authors, and of course, he's still doing well in the public relations world. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure having you once again, and uh, I want to appreciate uh, your contribution last week. Uh, we are looking at, uh, uh, last week, we looked at the World Book Day, yeah. and then uh, we dovetailed the discussion to the reading culture, and now to help the society in changing the dynamics in uh, ensuring that we get more enlightened, we get more literate, and we get more exposed to things that can upgrade us economically, socially, and then uh, be able to help us to compete in the world. So this time around, uh, I want us to look at how our young ones, even the adults, are reducing the standard of reading through ICT, talking about uh, Facebook, internet, and all the other areas. So does it have a negative effect or a positive effect? Madam. Well, uh, ICT technology is good, because uh, without it, you <laughs> some of us won't be here. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of e-books, mind you. Okay. So you can't rule it out completely if you can. How, how exposed are these people to e-books? That is the awareness we are talking about, the consciousness. Uh, there is this lady that does I read, and she has like a mobile uh, library in Lagos. Right. And she organizes reading sessions. And not long ago, she sent out a flyer to say that I think they have about 10,000 books free that you can access free online. All parents needed to do was just to pay to, so, you know, to have data to, so that they can, you know, latch on to them. But how many of them really subscribe to it? Free e-books, 10,000 copies. And before she put them up there, because that is what she does, she must have extrayed them, the top, the, the titles, right. and then to be sure that there are things that you want our young ones to read. How do we make this issue non-elitist? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's non-elitist because reading, is, reading equalizes all. Everybody is free to read. Everybody is free to get anything to read. In fact, you can read the encyclopedia, you can read the Bible, you can read anything. The information is there. So technology should actually be helping reading. It shouldn't be, you know, hindering it. Because we have, we even have a site called Any Book. Yeah. You can Google any book and you read. Amazing is there. You can read. You know, you know, so, so this technology should be assisting reading. It shouldn't be hindering it. If our people are reading the right stuff. You know, I, t I told you earlier on that our people are reading the wrong things. You know, it's not how to get them to read the correct yeah, things. things. Read about democracy. Read about how to develop your environment. Read about what to do to tackle your challenges. Have mentors. Read about your, yeah, you have mentors, you know. You want when, to be like Ben Carson, how did he achieve greatness? Right. My concern here is that uh, we are talking as an enlightened faculty there. Sir, that's where we miss it. It's not okay. that religious. Yes. It's not. We go to, we go to church. Most yeah. of us are Christians. And we have the Bible. The Bible. Okay. Do you know that people write uh, theses from the Bible? A lot of theses. You have poems. You have uh, 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 sonnets, so nice, uh, uh, songs of Solomon. Yeah. And he's talking about love and all that. So that's, the Bible itself is a, a good uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that elitist as you make it look mm. now the, ma the woman that says uh, google rob grabs granot wraps her granot with newspaper mm. so you, when you eat your granot you can read the content of the paper is that elitist too tell me your granot it's not elitist you can if you are really interested in reading you can get a lot of stuff from even that piece of paper with which they have wrapped your five, uh, five naira or ten naira grand That's why you encourage the young ones to do that. That is what you are saying. That is our aim, to encourage them to read. But so, it's not as elitist as you're making it look. So the, the elders, too, should be reading. We should inculcate that into our daily schedule. You know, if you have a time that you read, 
your children will also be looking at you so that you can model it. Yes. So we want to encourage our parents, our pastors, everybody to read. Even some pastors these days don't even read the Bible. They just go there. <laughs> they are using residual knowledge. So let us go back to read and prepare. You know the five P's. Prayerful preparation prevents poor performance. So when you read, you study, you do so you can, you, 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 you do well. well. What are the other channels to expose uh, uh, everyone to book reading? Okay, I, I want to uh, say this, that when we are having festive occasions, you know, birthdays, naming ceremonies, weddings and everything, we should be giving out books as gifts. Mm -hmm. Rather than monetizing it, you know, give books you know, to commemorate the birth of your son. son. Yeah, and you, and you put the dates and you give books. And people should appreciate this. Reading competition. Yes, having organized reading competition. Reading clubs. Reading clubs. Some college reading academies. Reading academies. Uh -huh. Then, you know, we, 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 we should be promoting reading. You know, uh, the, 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 the situation where we're in, our, in our society, we, we have a lot of money being spent on, uh, you know, reality shows. Yeah. You know, that should change. You know, money should be spent to, you know, model to the right thing, develop, the, the, develop mind. the mind, you know. Because when the mind is developed, there is no limit to what the mind can achieve. Yeah. You know, do we do we attribute uh, this uh, declining uh, culture of reading to the cut in budget for educational issues? It may not necessarily be, because you are talking the uh, budget will be addressing maybe cognitive area. We are talking about, talking about the provision of infrastructural facilities, yeah. uh, 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 building structures, uh, giving uh, allowances, uh, maybe feeding, and some other things. Yes, and uh, when a child is not fully fed, the tendency to concentrate in learning may be reduced. Then it will be learning generally, not just in reading. So that's when he goes to school. That's when he will not concentrate. But even reading will help him to concentrate better because before the teacher says anything, he already understands what the, where the teacher is going. The words there are not, are not uh, strange to him. Right. He understands the words, so comprehension becomes easy. So the budget fine, we advocate that maybe they can improve on whatever the budget for education. But I don't think it's a, a, a big hindrance on the ability of children to read or the, or, or the ability of us creating awareness, mm. you know, and allowing children to read, encouraging children to read, knowing the benefits of reading. Okay, let me ask uh, this question. Uh, we, when I was in private school, uh, we used to have uh, libraries in some local governments. Do we still have that now? They should have. Uh, some, 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 some are there. Some yes. are moribund, you know. But the there should be, many are more <laughs> but, but there should be this awakening. Now we are, you know, there should be this awakening that on every street, you know, let's have a reading. Corner. What's your advice uh, to government? Yes, uh, government. Yes, government is the enabler of so many things. So government should set examples. You know, there should be reading clubs. We should have clubs, reading clubs where people can come, young ones can come and join and be reading, and you'll be exchanging books. There should be reading clubs then. Local government uh, secretaries, they should have libraries. Then even the library that is there, Simeon Adebo Library, is not visited as such. You know, you know, it is under visited. <laughs> <laughs> when you get there, you see that there are so many vacant spaces. So our people should be reading. And parents should encourage their children to go to the library. Maybe on Saturday in the morning. Let them go to the library and spend four or five hours there. And there are no old books anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old books that were written years, for many thousands, years, thousand years ago are still relevant today because they will still contain mm -hmm. relevant uh, materials. But they may be, the, the ideas may be a cake. You'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> ideas are timeless. <laughs> ideas never die. <laughs> <laughs> you may be surprised. <laughs> I, I, I want to look at the situation where we have. On social grant, we are partners. Are you having a partners on this uh, issue of uh, books and uh, the other areas that can improve learning? I think that's where these uh, reading clubs right. come yeah. in. Because I was just talking with somebody. It's something, it's, that reading club is something that I would like to set up. I like reading. Of course, I, li I did literature all the way. And I have, I find companionship in books. Mm. 
I don't have to have any friend mm. at all because once I'm reading my book, that's my friend. Or you can interact with the characters there, the situations there you can interact. So if you have, and I was asking, I want to, how did you run your own book club? And he said, oh, they come in there, you know, a number of people come together. At times they read books. At times they discuss other issues, maybe um, current affairs. Right. At times you get somebody to talk to them about finances, how to man manage your finances. They're partners because at least they congregate once a week. Mm -hmm. So they're friends. And I don't know if that's the kind of partnership you're talking about. Yeah, even uh, having the activities for right. book reading, developing uh, uh, clubs in the villages, mm -hmm. in uh, some suburbs and the like. Uh, do you have that in practice? I cannot say for everywhere, mm -hmm. but I know that they have reading clubs. They have reading clubs. Even in this Abdokuta, somebody had linked me up with somebody, you know, the, the, like the national coordinator who stays in Lagos and okay. linked me up with somebody in Abdokuta here. They have reading clubs. You just may not know. But we need more. You just may not know okay. that we they have. More. And I did so say, man is doing a, lo a good job. Le Lashi Le Lashi. Okay, Lashi Lashi. 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, he does. He does that. Uh, he does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 mm -hmm. uh, I know. I know of this one because he's a, an author, right. and then he has a lot. He had reading competition, reading competition, yeah, yeah. writing, even yeah. in having situ writing. Right. So he's doing a good job. Maybe we need more. Of Maybe that. Anna can take it. <laughs> he's the vice chairman now, of Anna. Uh, so you, yeah, he so he it can uh, reply uh, himself. He, he can reproduce himself. He will take it off. Well. Uh, Talking about how uh, well to do individuals, mm. uh, how do you redirect them to engendering this kind of uh, book reading, creating a culture mm -hmm. whereby uh, young ones can adapt to this uh, new scenario that uh, we are preaching? Yeah, that's why we've been saying that they should be sponsoring competitions, you know, to encourage reading encourage scholarship. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than having reality shows, eh, 100 million for somebody who has been just playing around, messing around, that's not tidy enough. You know, they should use their money, put their money where their mouth is, you know, use their money to encourage scholarship. You know, for instance, in Egbal land now, we could have the, the best reader, you may be a secondary school student who has read mm -hmm. over 100 books, books yeah. uh -huh, then you give him a prize, then you put a billboard somewhere, announcing him, the mm. best, the state best reader, mm. Abel Kuta South best reader, best Abel Kuta, reader. all the 20 local government. So, so you have that. You encourage reading. And then, you know, you, you get them books, free books, you know, that they can exchange. Once you read, pass it on. Then we ask, mm. you ask each other, what book are you reading now? Mm. Well, like we used to do when we were mm. growing up. You know, we, in fact, there was a time we used to communicate with the, the titles of Chase. Mm. They say, come easy, go easy. <laughs> 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 knock, knock, who's there? And, and things like that. We should encourage reading. It helps because yes, you can discover the world. You can discover, even, even without going anywhere. anywhere, from where you are sitting down, you can travel the world sure. well, through reading. So this is how it opens up your mind. This is how it prepares you for leadership. So readers are leaders. So anybody who is interested in leadership should read. And it's, it's even recommended that a, a good CEO should read at least 50 books every month. Oof. Every month, yes. 50, <laughs> yes, yes, 50 books every month. So. I want to ask you now, um, because uh, you are the level of uh, molding young minds and uh, a lot of literary issues are available for them. What about science related issues? How do we develop them in a scientific uh, manner that uh, will enrich innovation? We also have scientific writings. <laughs> scientific <laughs> writings, we have adventure. Uh, but, you know, they have STEM. Okay. They have uh, jet, they have STEM, science, uh, technology, engineering, mathematics, and something. We are, you know, yeah, something like that. So it's at that level that you introduce them, the, apart from the course subjects they handle in other science or uh, basic science and technology. When you have your STEM club, then you can put up some of those things you've learned, you know, in theory into practice. But like I said, you also have scientific reading. 
So reading is all encompassing. Everything about life you can read from the text from a book. In those days, we used to have a literary and a debate society. society mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure anymore. But they still do have them. They still do have them. Mm. Schools have them. But they should increase it's not, the temple. It's not as pronounced as yeah, they used to have the temple. We are not. Then they have the, we should have schools challenge. You know, the, the quiz and the the, the, the I think that's uh, maybe. Is, the, it, is it the lack of uh, the media attention? Yeah, I think it's the political will. You know, the, the, the current problem. You know that we're having to face so many ignorant survivors and everything. So that's what's been affecting it. But we shouldn't allow that to affect scholarship. You know, we should rise above that. You know, it's a, it's a phase, it will pass. So whatever we're passing through now, we shouldn't allow it to affect reading. You know, we should also read. You know, we said, you can't give what you don't have. So if you are not reading, you can't ask your children whether they bread. Right. So you need to model to them. You need to show, lead by example. Read, and then you can answer, oh, yeah, go and pick your book. Go and be reading. Go, let me see what you are reading. Let and me see what you are reading. And then you reading. monitor them. Because some people, some children will be pretending as if they are reading, and they will be doing other things. So you need to monitor so them. How do we, if you monitor them. Pretending, how do we check? Well, you ask questions. Yeah, you it. ask questions based on what, what book are you reading? What is the character? Mm. Tell me more about the character. So what is reading? reading? What is the <laughs> detail? Right. So I think that was why I said reading is elitist. Because uh, it's uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 let me submit. The uh, reason why I said so is that. Uh, uh, the local people, probably the illiterates, who are not knowledgeable, may not be in this place. How about reading Yoruba literature? Yoruba literature. Yoruba newspaper. Yes. They read Yoruba. It, the, the, the readership is very high. You'll be surprised. Yeah. Yoruba literature. But that is also reading. So if you are, if you are, that, are, are reading Yoruba literature, that may also want you to say, oh, let me see what they have in this text that is not uh, Yoruba. Right. Okay, contemporarily, when you want to look at uh, Nigerians or Africans competing with uh, the people in the other clan in uh, this kind of a uh, competition, what, what, how have we excelled? When it comes to reading, I must say that we are not doing enough. Mm. Okay. And that is the truth. If you have ever kind of worked with maybe somebody from the UK or something, why we are here saying that you are this one telling stories, that person is reading his or her book. If you go to the airport, for instance, where the chat, you know, is making so much noise, he's reading. And, you know, they train them from get-go to enjoy and to love reading. reading because even in their schools, in fact, I don't know what happened because my father went to uh, whatever Obomosho teacher training college right. Obomosho, and he told us that they were compelled to read a book a week. A week. That was my father died like 25 years ago. <laughs> so I don't know what went wrong. Maybe it is that routine, that process that is already dying. So we should revive it. That's right. what we are saying. We should mm. try and revive it so that we'll be at par with those other people who every week they read books. They don't just read it for the fun of it. Right. They extract the books mm -hmm. that they have read. So we can get to that level. We have the same brains as they have, but right. we just have to beg our parents. So please, even if it's only one book they read in a month, it's mm -hmm. better than not reading anything. anything. At all. Hmm. Well, we've just talked about uh, young ones, Adults, what about the artisans? I have to bring that in because uh, I realize that uh, most of them lack theoretical approach to getting understanding, to getting solutions to some of uh, uh, their works. Okay, maybe you are talking about being peer reviewed. Uh, maybe you say our artisans should not go with the knowledge. He just, she just spoke about the medicine man who had this uh, remedy for yeah, hair yeah. and then dying with that, you know, uh, uh, recipe. Yeah. So we should, you know, that this is why we are encouraging people to write books. Write autobiography. Write about your thoughts. Write about your ideas. Write about your findings. So if you don't write, you just, you know, it's, that's why they say when a person dies, a whole library is burnt down. So don't allow what you have, the experience you have had to go down. So write, put your thoughts down for, for posterity so that your, your generations 50 years, 60 years, 100 years from now 
can read and learn that this is this was how daddy the, the favorite uh, the, the famous carpenter did his work so you put them you give them the tips on how to come up with good uh, furniture give them tips on how to come up, how to do good works you know these days they are saying they are, some people are complaining that they are not good bricklayers so give them tips on what to do to excel at their in, in their skills so we need to pass it on to the next generation yeah in passing it on to the next generation how has uh, the school administrators how have they helped in connecting with the private sector people with the uh, government functionaries in shaping and coming up with schemes that can enhance this book reading and learning that we are talking about well i know that they have associations and they're able to deal with ministry of education then what about the private individuals i don't know much about that but i know that the ministry of education supervises uh, the operations of private schools and even government owned schools and they have you know they check the scheme every the maps for instance has her own scheme the federal government has a scheme all of them addressing the same issues you may just have any little uh, variations this time this one does money second time another one does something else but at the end of the day we have milestones that every child in every class should have covered but i don't know whether they are relating with private individuals <laughs> but i want to say yes so it depends you know it just depends on the connection you have it's not impossible that some private individuals are also assisting yeah i think there should be more of that so that uh, you can engender a new vista for this kind of uh, development that we are craving for well i want to say that uh, it's been great having a good of you experienced exposed the school administrator for excellence and a uh, prior practitioners uh, on this uh, set this evening i want to thank you dr mrs uh, linda Awoka. thank you us. for having me thanks i also want to appreciate it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's always a delight having you around. Same here. Mm -hmm. the next week, when we meet to have a brand new topic, I'm Akin Kudero, your uncle. Stay blessed.